Imagine this. One fine day, you're driving down a road on your way home. The sun feels warm. A breeze blows through your slightly ajar window. You're going about your day as you normally would, when suddenly... Your car starts making a strange noise. In the road up ahead, there's a mechanic who is open and available. In your back pocket, you have the money you need to pay for the repair. Now you have a choice to make. Do you pull into the mechanic's workshop and get the car fixed? Or do you just get angry about it and just continue driving home? Now you have a choice to make. Do you pull into the mechanic's workshop and get the car fixed? Or get angry about the problem and carry on driving like nothing happened? This question may seem pretty straightforward. But is it really though? We live in a world where people do things that seem very self-centered. Where they say they're doing the things that's best for them. Now, if we look at it, something simple like a breakup. The minute that happens, people immediately go to a place of, I'm going to take everything, leave it behind, carry on like this person never existed. And this is actually where the problem lies. That isn't doing what's best for you. The only way to actually do what's best for you is to actually acknowledge that there's a problem. This is just one example of many. You see, people think they're doing what's best for them, but they're not really. When you look at it from a deeper sense, what they're doing isn't the best thing for them to do because they're not dealing with the issues that they've had. They're not dealing with the breakup that they've had. They're not dealing with the car that's broken. All they're doing is using a bad coping technique to try and mask the problem. Now, there's a saying that I use quite frequently and it's, you can't put a band-aid on cancer. You're trying to suppress a symptom without looking at the deeper cause. And if we do that, we have a problem where we get lost in treating things the whole time. Instead of actually finding the root cause and working on that and having that alleviate the problem altogether. People often do what they say is best for them. But if that's the case, then why does no one seem to be truly happy? We live in a world full of information and technology. You'd think that anything and everything you're looking for exists. And you're probably right. We live in a time where no matter what your interests are, no matter what your hobbies are, no matter what skills you have, and even more so, no matter what fetish you have, there's a group of people, sight or bored, that sits and discusses these things. And if you don't believe me, go and try it right now. We live in a time where if you don't know how to do your tax, you Google it. If something is broken on your PC, you go and watch a YouTube tutorial on how to fix it. If you don't know how to do something, all the information and knowledge you could ever need is right there at your fingertips almost every second of every day. Whether it's in the form of courses, infographics, blogs, podcasts, YouTube videos, Wikipedia pages, it doesn't matter. All the information is there whenever you need it. Now, while all of these sites exist to fix various things like electronics, like your finances, like all of these things, there's also sites and people who discuss personal development. And this is something that isn't frequently Googled by other people. You see, the problem is people aren't interested in fixing themselves. They'll rather fix other things and try and fix other people. But what they're not seeing is that in order to fix other people, you have to fix yourself. Because the problem never really truly lies with the other person, but more with the reflection of yourself in the other person that is making you angry, that's making you upset. And this is something people do very frequently, is that they project their emotions, their insecurities, all of the things that they don't like about themselves, they project it onto other people. And they get annoyed with those people for doing what they're doing, just something that they haven't dealt with. You see, all this information is all around us, whenever we need it, wherever we need it. The problem is no one's using this information that they have 
to actually work on themselves. They may work on their finances, they may work on their cars, they may work on YouTube videos, but they never really work on themselves. Now personally, if it wasn't for the help of the internet, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be the person I am today and I wouldn't be doing this right now. You see, when I started my path on personal development, it was an unknown path. It was something I didn't know existed before. I had just found ways to adapt to my environment and carry on through my life. Now, when I had done this, it was a big change in scenery for me. I was going through a lot of different things at the time and seemingly simple things, which as a kid at that time, you're not 100% sure how to deal with these things. So you create coping mechanisms where you can to try and learn how to deal with this. Now, if I hadn't gone through all of that, I wouldn't be where I am today. And the only way I got to where I am today is by making mistakes and f***ing up and f***ing up again and learning from those mistakes and then f***ing up again and then learning from those mistakes and carrying on. So personal development isn't just about doing things once, getting it perfect and carrying on. It's about a continuous process of making mistakes, f***ing up, fixing it and then getting back to where you need to be. Personal development to everyone means a different thing. What it means to myself, what it means to you, what it means to the person next to you, it, it's all different things to different people. And the things you're gonna learn are all gonna be different from the things I learned, the way I learned them and things like that. You're never gonna learn the same thing the same way someone else did, unless, you know, you go to school. But even then, it's not learning. We memorize those things in school. If you think about the time you learned not to touch a hot stove, you learn by going and touching a hot stove, burning your fingers, and then not touching a hot stove again. You have to make the mistakes to actually learn. And the problem is we live in a society where you're condemned for making mistakes. We're always taught that making mistakes are bad. We get detention, we get demerits, we get held off to school. We're always taught from a young age that if you make a mistake, something bad will happen to you. And that's the completely wrong way that we're going about things these days. Because it creates a society where people are afraid of making mistakes. And the only true way to learn is to make those mistakes, learn from them, and not do the same thing, but try something else. The biggest problem is that when people make mistakes, they may learn, but they may never try again. And that's the problem. We can never refine a skill without making the mistake, learning and trying again. You see, the reason people are never really truly interested in fixing themselves is because they're afraid to look at what's wrong with them. Everyone loves to see themselves as this perfect human being where everything they do is perfect and they shit roses, right? But people who truly know themselves understand that anything that happens is their fault. This is barring extreme circumstances where something is done to you. Now, when I say that, you need to understand where I'm coming from with this. If you're robbed, that happened to you. If you're shot, that happened to you, right? But the way we deal with situations is what I'm talking about. Everything is your fault in the sense that how you react to a situation is your fault. How you choose to react to the situation is your fault anything at any point in time is your fault in the sense that you chose to do these things. You chose to work the job you work. You chose to have the hobbies you do. You chose the friends you have and you choose the way you react to situations. Everything is my fault. 
everything that happens in my life is my fault. Everything that happens in yours is your fault. And once you can truly understand that everything that happens is your fault, you'll then start looking at why those things happened and how you can work to not have them happen again. If you're not happy with the situation you're in, change it. Nothing's fixed in one place. You're not a tree. You can move from here to there, back there, back there. If things aren't working out, do something about it. Change your life. Try different things. And if they don't work, you learned. Try again. Try something else. Try something new. The problem is we get caught in a process of trying the same thing over and over and over again. And that's Einstein's definition of insanity, which is, for those of you who don't know, trying the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If we sit and try the same thing over and expect something different to come from it, are we not just as insane as people who don't try at all? Doing the same thing isn't learning. Doing the same thing is making the same mistake every time. Now, if you change your environment and you still make the same mistake, it's still doing the same thing. If you're lazy at one job and you go to a different company because they're more relaxed, but you're still lazy, you're still gonna get fired. It's still the same thing in a different setting. And just because the setting changed doesn't mean your attitude towards it changed. This is why we need to understand that everything we do is our fault. And any way we want to change is up to us. With all the information around you, stop trying to fix your car. Stop trying to fix your phone. Fix yourself. Stop watching cat videos. <laughs> stop watching cat videos. Stop watching irrelevant things. What you take in is what you absorb. The first way to start this is to look at all the people around you. Try and identify key elements within them where you see that they aren't making progress. Now, we're not talking in a monetary sense unless that's the route you'd like to go. But we're talking about in an emotional sense, in a psychological sense. Are they understanding the situations around them? Are they understanding themselves? If not, try and recognize those issues that they are unable to recognize. And slowly by recognizing in others, you will slowly start recognizing it within yourself. And that's the first step is recognizing because we can't fix a problem without knowing what the problem is. If we don't take the car to the mechanic, we won't know what the problem is and we can't fix it. Once you've recognized the problem, that is your first stepping stone. That's something you should be proud of. It's something you should recognize and say to yourself, hey, I'm really proud of myself for seeing this. But now a lot of people get happy and then they're done there. We need to step further than that if we actually want to change. We need to go, I recognize the problem. What are root causes of this problem? By understanding the cause, we can try and treat it. And we're not throwing a plaster on cancer. So what we first do is we recognize it, we understand it, and then we start slowly trying different techniques to treat this problem and when one technique fails we try something else when i say you choose how you react to a situation you need to understand that though your emotions may be subconsciously there and the way you react to a situation immediately is an instinctual feeling but we learn how to react to situations, firstly by observing those around us. And as a child, we observed how our parents reacted to situations 
and that's how we were raised and that's more than likely the way you would react to a situation later on if you hadn't found another coping technique later on in your life when i was younger i would take any emotion felt and immediately turn it to anger because it was the easiest emotion to understand firstly and secondly to deal with it's easy to be angry at everyone in the world because they did something to you it's a little bit more difficult to be angry at yourself when you understand that you did it to yourself now our subconscious controls the way we react to the situation but we train our subconscious in that way a simple technique of understanding and trying to control the way you react to situations is understand that your first reaction is instinct that's the way you've been programmed that's the way you've been taught the same goes with your thoughts your first thought is instinct it's the way you've been brought up it's the way you've always thought before your second thought is who you truly are if you see something horrible happening and your first thing is immediately defend the person attacking you then catch yourself and say wait let me actually think about the situation no one should actually be attacking someone else your second thought was one that came from a conscious place subconsciously you reacted to the situation you then caught that thought and thought about it in your own sense we can do the same thing with emotion we first react to a situation we can then process it and change our reaction our emotional response to a situation by doing this over time slowly catching your thought changing it carrying on catching your thought changing it carrying on we slowly start reprogramming our subconscious and our instinct it's a simple technique which is extremely difficult <laughs> it's simple in the sense that there aren't a lot of steps to it it's difficult in the sense that you're feeling something at almost any point of every day and trying to catch those emotions deal with them and let them go or change them is a very difficult technique to master it's not something i have even mastered there's many times where i slip up and you get angry you get upset you get sad but the majority of the time you want to try and catch those emotions think about them change them and carry on another issue is that people live in the past if something happened we can't move on from it we sit and dwell on the thought we sit and dwell on the anger we sit and dwell on the sadness instead of understanding that it's happened there's nothing we can actually do to change the past and therefore wallowing in it right now is only extending that hurt it's only extending the sadness it's only extending all of these emotions that you are feeling and you don't live in the present because you're still focused on what happened in the past or you're too focused on what's going to happen in the future if we look at an example of monks the ones that meditate all day not the detective monk but if we look at monks that sit and meditate what they're doing is effectively getting themselves to live in the present moment when they say clear your mind of all thoughts they don't mean stop thinking about breathing they mean stop thinking about what has happened and stop thinking about what will happen and be here now the way monks control their heartbeats the way monks control their reaction to stimuli is all based on this technique a monk can endure more pain than a regular human can because of the fact that they aren't living in the pain before it's happened we have a situation where we live in the past and the future we never live now 
So if something's about to happen to us, we anticipate it. And in that anticipation, we cause stress, we cause anger, we cause anxiety, we cause the pain that hasn't happened yet. We don't know what is going to happen, but we still live anticipating, we live in anxiety of this pain that's coming. Now, monks don't live in that moment. What they do is they live in the moment now, the pain happens, they regulate their heartbeat and minimize the feeling of pain as much as possible. Whereas we've anticipated the pain. So our thoughts are already spiking, our heart rate is increasing. And when the pain hits, we have this jarring spike. And we feel the pain to a greater extent than what they would. I'm not saying they don't feel the pain, they feel it. They just feel it to a much lesser extent than what we have because they didn't live in a moment of worrying about the pain, having anxiety about the pain, then feeling the pain, and then wallowing in self-pity about the pain. They are in the moment, they feel the pain, they're in the moment again. Whereas we go, I'm gonna get hurt, I'm gonna get hurt, I'm gonna get hurt, ah, it hurts, it hurts, ah, it still hurts, ah, ah, it still hurts, ah, that pain from five minutes ago hurts. You know, we, we live in a, we live in the past and we live in the future. We never live right here, right now. I'm not saying that it's not going to hurt. I'm just saying that worrying about it hurting and worrying about the fact that you have been hurt isn't going to change anything about your present reality. So with that, I challenge you, take your car to the mechanic. Identify the problems that you see around you Slowly use those to start identifying problems with yourself and try your best to live in the present. Try and live now. Don't live in the past. Don't live in the future. Try it right now. Be here. Don't be on your phone. Unless you're watching this on your phone. But don't be doing something else. Don't be focused on things that are coming up. Don't be focused on things that have happened. Live here, live now, take your car to the mechanic, get it fixed, carry on. Love you, miss you, bye!